Welcome back Physics 30. So this is part two of the video in the projectile section. So we'll look at here solving these types of questions. So read the problem carefully. Choose the objects that you're going to analyze. It always helps to draw a diagram too, of course. Like right here, a diagram is drawn for you. But it's a good idea to draw a diagram. Choose an origin and a coordinate system. Decide on the time of travel. Now this is a key thing. This is the same in both directions. We should add something there. When objects are launched horizontally, in this first case, we'll see some scenarios that are a little bit different, and uh, includes only the time the object is moving with constant acceleration in the vertical direction. Examine X and Y components separately. So our X, constant velocity. Y, yeah, they're speeding up and slowing down due to acceleration due to gravity. List the known and unknown qualities. And yes, remember that VX never changes. And then just like back, remember back in 1.5 when we throw things up in the air, the V at the very top of the path whether it's V final, if it's if this is VI, this is V final, it's zero. Or for analyzing the last part, it's V initial and it's equals zero and V final equals something over here. That velocity at the top of the path is a changing direction, so it is zero. Plan how you'll proceed, use the appropriate equations. You may have to combine some. So let's look at this. Let's look at the scenario in which I'm launching something horizontally. We have a movie stunt driver driving a motorcycle speed. It's uh, on a cliff that's 50 meters tall. I'm going to call this dy. Hopefully you don't get confused with calculus uh, variables here. dy just simply means the displacement in the y direction. And over here we have dx, which is the displacement in the x direction. So it's a 50 meter high cliff. The guy is going to launch off so that he lands 90 meters away. Uh, how, must, how fast must the motorcycle be traveling in order for this to happen? So in other words, we're going to be looking for Vx. What is that constant velocity that he needs to have? Okay. Now, there's a couple of things here. In order to figure out Vx, and we know it's going to be constant, right? Because anything in the, const, anything in the horizontal direction is constant. We know we're going to be going 90, uh, but we don't know the t, of course. We don't know the T, but the time of fall for the motorcycle traveling horizontally is the same. Uh, as the time of fall for a dropped object at the same height. So remember, if I launch something this way, or if I drop the motorcycle horizontal or vertically, Remember that diagram on the first page, the analyzing of the vertical motions? It's identical. So, of course, it's much easier to figure out the time of fall for a dropped object than kind of this parabolic shape. Okay, so let's look at this situation vertically. Let's move it over to here. Vertically. So vertically, uh, or if I'm looking at a dropped object, Dropped object. Uh, it's VI is going to be zero. I'm looking for T. I have my acceleration, which is equal to G. And I know the displacement through which it's falling. So I think I have, oh yes, I have this relationship. Plus one half A delta T squared. And to be more clear about which D I'm talking about, I'm talking about the vertical D. So I could put a dy there, I suppose, to indicate what I'm talking about. Now, so a dropped object is going to be undergoing this movement, falling down. If it is going up, 
positive 50. If you're going down, it's negative 50. So just be aware of that. The displacement has to be negative because you're going downwards. And of course, if you're dropped here, the initial vertical velocity is zero. And uh, negative 9.8, and then delta t. And of course, what happens here, look at that. That's going to be all zero over there. So negative 50. Then a half of negative 9.98, negative 4.9, and so divided by negative 4.9, divided by negative 4.9, and look at this, negative divided by negative gives me a positive, it's a good thing because my t has to be that. So if t squared equals this, then t is going to be equal to the square root of negative 50 over the negative 4.9, and delta t works out to be, to three sig figs, 3.19 seconds. So 1,001, 1,002, 1,003 hits the ground. Makes sense. All right, so now, so if I drop an object, it falls 3.19 seconds. If this uh, motorcycle is going horizontally, 3.19 seconds. It's the same. So now to figure out uh, horizontally what's going on, Ah, uh, it's going at constant velocity, remember. So Vx is equal to delta dx over delta t. My horizontal displacement is 90. The time of flight, ah, uh, yes, it is 3.19 seconds. So I can figure out my horizontal velocity here, which is constant throughout. And that's going to be 28.2 meters per second. And I could put positive here, or I could say to the right, it doesn't matter, as long as you have some direction there. All right? So there we go. Now, in the assignment, I have various things uh, involving this type of scenario. So a cliff or a rock, or something going off horizontally. You'll get different variables, but guess what? The analyzing of the question is the same. The first part, you'll likely have to figure out either T or maybe you'll have to figure out D, the, the height of the cliff, but just realize it's negative. And then from there, you might have to figure out uh, displacement, etc. But I think this setup is the same. So analyze the thing as if something is dropped and then look at what's happening horizontally. So what I do is I think I'll stop the video there and you can try questions one, two, and three from the assignment. And again, draw a little sketch here, and uh, you can go from there and hopefully figure it out. All right, we'll see you again with part three in a bit.